Hello, everyone. Good morning to everyone joining us from the US and Canada. And very good evening, everyone here in India. Uh, first of all, thank you, everyone, for registering to a special episode of Speaker Series. A speaker Series is a weekly virtual session organized by DC CAP, where we bring in distinguished thought leaders, technology masters, and change makers around the globe to address on varied topics which matters most to the community. We have already organized over 15 sessions of speaker series across various technological streams, and you can find all the recorded session on our website, www.dccap.com, under the resources section. That said, let me use this opportunity to give you all a quick intro about DC CAP the organization behind the speaker series. Uh, DC, DC CAP is a digital commerce agency specializing in building e-commerce storefronts for clients abroad. We specialize in Magento, Shopify, and Big Commerce. Also, with over 15 years of experience in the industry, we have developed a handful of products that allows brands and businesses to unleash their full potential. The product suite includes product demise, a product customization platform, a Clore is an automated integration tool between ERP, CRM, and e-commerce stores, and Flexipim, a product information management platform, a QA Touch, a smart test management platform, and Wisby, an e-commerce data analytics platform. That being said, let me bounce back to today's session. I'm honored to introduce uh, Alan Kent, uh, e-commerce developer advocate at Google, Initially, Alan Kidd joined eBay in 2011 as a VP of Search Engine Engineering, where he held the team that built Cassini, the search engine that rewrote search engine history. Later, he joined Magento as a VP of Architecture and was significantly involved in Magento 2 platform. Later on in 2018, Alan joined Google as an e-commerce developer advocate through which he is bringing in the knowledge from internal Google team to the outside world for improving commerce on the web. Today, he is about to give a short presentation on Google Merchant Center and why every e-commerce person should leverage the platform following which there will be a fireside chat where Alan will be uh, addressing your few questions from the community. And no, like, so that session will be handled by Shiva Kumar, our strategy head of digital product suits at DC cap. And uh, no, so all that said, I don't want to hold off you guys from hearing out the capitative session by the wonderful speakers, uh, speaker lined up for the day. I'm sure that you will all uh, will have a great learning experience tonight. And should you have any question, like uh, you guys uh, can use the uh, Q&A section that you can see at the bottom of your Zoom window. Without further ado, let me hand over this session to Alan. And once again, thank you so much, Alan, for accepting our invite and uh, looking forward to hear your capitative session. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here. Cool. So what I'm going to be talking about today is Google Merchant Center and its importance, particularly for e-commerce sites in terms of getting your data into Google. Now, if I, if I start off, um, part of the thing about Google is if, uh, you've all used Google, I'm sure, to do various searches, but there's a number of different surfaces you can do searches across. There is the default good old Google search experience. You've got image search. There's the shopping tab in Google search. Uh, there's map searches and so forth. And if you try, uh, I've just done a query for backpack here and I just took a number of screenshots. And what you might quickly discover is Google search might, you might just think of as finding information for a query, but it's actually got a lot of information that it can uh, augment the experience if it knows it's a product. For example, in the top listing there, we've got the, the backpacks and it's got a star rating. Well, it can, it's only going to display a star rating if it knows it's a product and it knows the ratings for that product. And so it has to link this information together. Even for image search, if you bring up images, if it's a product, it puts this little icon hovering over the top to say, well, this isn't just an image I found. It's actually, I know it's a product and it's actually listed where it was available from and included information like it was in stock. And so to be able to uh, enrich the search results with this product information, we've got to know the product information. And so this is what we refer to as structured data. It's not just free text. It's 
it's data with more structure. There's many different types of structured data. You can um, mark up recipes, you can mark up uh, reviews. There's a number of different types of structured data. I'm going to be focusing on uh, product structured data, which includes pricing and improves, includes uh, availability, um, location. So for example, if you go down to the bottom one with the map search, we've got to know where your inventory is in order to be able to answer queries. So if somebody does a search such as backpacks near me, um, well, we will know that that's um, the near me phrase tells us that you're trying to do a maps search, even in the normal organic search. And we need to know the location of your inventory. Otherwise, we can't answer that query and bring up your results. So a lot of it is around making this richer data available for these richer experiences. Now, you might say, well, what is the full list of experiences? Well, unfortunately, there's more continually being added all the time. And so targeting the experiences can be a challenging thing. And it's not something I actually recommend people worry about too much. It's more about making the data available so that Google can uh, get access to it. So this, again, this was just a standard search. and You can try them yourself. But I just did a query for backpacks. And within that one query, it was coming up with um, the sponsored material, yep, the ads, um, but it was also recommending popular products, uh, what other people asked, uh, it came up with research, uh, top stories, images, discover more stores, maps. So there's a number of different experiences and there's always more being tried, added, removed based on feedback and based on, um, you know, we do A-B testing of different experiences. And so, Targeting experiences for e-commerce is a bit hard. It is more about making the data, the richest data as possible available to Google. And then we will make that, uh, use that data to provide different experiences to users based on that data. So yes, there are lots of experiences made possible by structured data, but the, the goal is to get that data available to Google. That's what merchants should be worrying about. So I thought I'd start with a, uh, it's not, I'm not saying this is uh, highly accurate, but uh, just to give a bit of an overview of Google and just to, to talk through the different stages. So back in 1998, Google basically crawled your website, found pages, those crawled pages got fed into the Google search index and people could search it. Pretty straightforward. But it was only 2002, by which time there was already a product search capability called Frugal, which I thought was a rather cool name actually when I discovered that one. Um, some of you might have known it from way back then, but uh, yes, Frugal was a thing and it was a product search capability. And how it worked was they had relationships with a number of particular merchants and there was actually a feed that went from those merchant platforms into the product search. Google also tried to crawl the web pages and automatically identify web pages that contained products but the reality is it wasn't particularly accurate. It didn't do a particularly good job. And so it really was the feeds that, um, that was a primary way of finding the product data. If we uh, skip forward to about 2010, um, Google Merchant Center by that stage ex existed and Google Merchant Center, which is the yellow down the bottom, it was used to feed data to um, ads, and so they would appear within Google Shopping, uh, Google Search, and uh, when you're doing uh, searching through images, uh, I forgot to mention that was uh, image search also came back way back in 2002. So image search has been around a while, and product search has been around a long time actually on Google. But you got paid ads to get your experience, uh, your, your products into surfaces. Uh, there's also the Google Display Network for ads and the Google Shopping tab. Uh, but it was paid membership. You had to um, um, sign up with agreements. Google would take a cut of the sale and so forth. Now, structured data was also being fed in at that stage to get more accurate data. And Google would often compare the web pages to the actual feeds just to make sure nobody's um, claiming one thing via a feed. And then when a user would click off to a link, that gets a different experience when they landed on the site. Yeah. Unfortunately, people try and play fun and games. But if we jump forward to 2020, um, just this year, there's been two new experiences, which to me elevates the importance for Google Merchant Center for all merchants. One 
is Google uh, product data is now fed into organic search results. And so it's used to enrich those search results instead of just relying on the crawler. The product data out of Google Merchant Center is also used to augment that product data that the Google crawler receives. And so even if you do it for no other reason, before you'd only upload the products you actually plan to use in one of the paid experiences. Now, why bother with all that extra overhead and complexity? But now it makes sense to upload more products because that will get you into Google search results better. It also um, is now possible to join the Google Shopping tab for free. Now, there are still paid uh, entries in the Google Shopping tab, and you do get an elevated experience, but you can get all your products in there for free, um, but only if you do it through the Google Shopping, uh, Google Merchant Center. Now, there are also automated feeds uh, with structured data. Um, so we, the crawler also feeds into Google Merchant Center. So you've got different ways, and we're gonna look through some of these uh, different approaches and some of the pros and cons in, in a bit more detail in a moment. So what are ways of getting your data into uh, Google Merchant Center? Now, if you're on Magento, most likely you're gonna get an extension. So I'm gonna, uh, and, and it will be responsible for getting your data through. I'm just gonna talk about different approaches that these extensions are likely to be using. So just to reinforce the problem of Google understanding your site, one of the things I wanted to start with was What's the challenge? Why not just get it straight off the page? Well, I, I just picked a page at random. Um, and if you look at this, you'd say, okay, we've got a possible 70% discount. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read, but down on the page, the price was originally $139, dropped to $56 uh, with free shipping. How, how do I make sure that I've got the right price there when Google crawls it because it's just put a strike through through, is it gonna reliably recognize that the 139 was the original price and the 56 was a discounted price and the shipping is free, so there's no dollars figures for that. Um, what about taxes? Uh, which are the product reviews? How do I make sure that Google can understand my product reviews because it's got it there? And to top it all off at the top of this page, I actually have other projects, uh, other products listed across the top and each of them have got their own prices and uh, things. So trying to crawl and get the data off pages of arbitrary web pages on the web, it can be tricky. And that's where structured data becomes very useful for Google is because the merchant can tell Google in a more reliable way so that Google can make sure it understands the pages correctly. And many of those special treatments that you saw earlier on search, they're powered by structured data. They're, they're powered by Google, or to be more precise, they're powered by Google understanding things about the product. So if Google can't understand it, we can't make your products available in those um, richer experiences. So one way to do structured data, there's a couple of ways to embed it, but one way is basically to drop a, a lump of JSON directly into your web pages. And um, you'd probably do with this using an extension, as I said, on Magento, but because it's represented and marked up clearly, it's much easier to understand it. And so you might say, great, I've got structured data on my site already, I'm done. Well, not quite. If you want to get into the Google Shopping tab, you have to opt in via a feed. You actually have to give Google permission to do so to put you in the shopping experience. So just having structured data by itself is not enough. You've got to enable it in Google Merchant Center. So if you wanted a very simple way to get up and going with uh, Google Shopping, the number one way to get data in is just using website crawling. And so what you can do is you can actually, if you add structured data to all your web pages, you can point Google Merchant Center off at your site and it will crawl those pages and it'll use the structured data to populate the product data in Google Merchant Center. And so you don't have to worry about um, generating feeds. With this one, excuse me. There are different actually feeds that you can um, supply in and I'm, I'm primarily talking about product data here, but in this sort of a mode, the web crawler will be identifying the primary list of data, uh, primary list of products. So it's what's gonna discover all, what all the products are and wh which ones exist. You can add supplemental data feeds. 
And there are different ways of doing it. For example, if you've got a small volume of data, you can just use a Google Sheet and just type it in. Um, but there are also scheduled fetches and you can do um, feed uploads where it might be like a CSV file or um, there's a few different formats, format, uh, supported XML and so forth. And the supplemental data you can use to enrich the primary data. So for example, if your website has lots of structured data about products, but it doesn't have their um, pricing information or it doesn't have, um, in this case, they've got like sale information. It might be inventory information, like where is the inventory located? If it's not on your web page because you don't want to make it available or it's not easy to make available, you can have supplementary feeds. And it's basically, there's an ID field and it just does a join by ID to build up the final result. And so one of the advantages of that is it allows you to update your pricing information more rapidly because like the crawl is going to happen at Google rates of crawling. And so it may only occur every few days or it really depends on your site. Um, well, you can update the pricing information uh, much more frequently. And another one is a lot of times people don't want to put the local inventory information up on the website because it, it's not actually used on the web page. And so that would be another example where if you wanted to make that data available to get into like maps, search experiences, you can have a supplemental feed and just to list um, products where you've got them in uh, different locations uh, to upload that. But it's the primary feed is how it finds products. The supplemental feeds are basically additional data that gets added to the primary data feed. I'd say the most common way though is, is to actually generate, have a platform generate a feed. And uh, as I said before, it's probably a CSV file or similar. Um, you'd still put structured data on your pages if you're able to. The, the reason or the benefit for doing that is Google does things like check the, uh, your feed against the product pages and the better we're able to understand the product pages, the, the easier it is to update that. But this is probably the more common way. You generate a list of all your products. We upload that periodically to refresh our copy of all the database. We then will push that data off into um, the organic search experiences and off into the paid experiences. So in this sort of approach, what I talked about before for supplemental feeds, you can use that for primary and supplemental feeds. So yes, you can load up all your data via a Google Sheet. Um, it does work, but if you're getting into like, I don't know if there's an absolute cutoff, but if you're sort of like talking about tens of thousands of products, the sheet approaches, it gets less efficient um, using things like CSV files or other files that does process uh, more efficiently. I mentioned uh, already about uh, comparing the page to check and it's basically a fraud check. And so the structured data is still useful. Even if you've got a feed, if you're able to do so, it just gives us more reliable information. Um, is it mandatory? No, um, but it can help with uh, reducing uh, problematic issues, particularly if we are not able to crawl their page reliably and we pick up the wrong pricing field, we might flag a product as saying, Hey, you, your feed told us it was, um, uh, uh, $56, but your, the, when we crawled your page, it came up with that 136 and it's because we picked up the discount price by accident instead. Now, if you do put structured data onto your page, there is still a challenge because there is a, a, a time delay. And so one of the other features you may look at in, in Google Merchant Center is, is the ability to update um, item availability and pricing information from uh, the structured data. And so when we go off and check for consistency, you can tell it to sort of say, hey, trust the website data for pricing and availability more than my feed, because maybe you only update the feed once a week or, or basically less frequently. And so if we hit the page, we can say, instead of flagging it as a possible inconsistency, we can just say, look, just use the, the, the website data and we'll drive it from there. Now, the third way of telling uh, Google about data on your site is there is also an API. And what the API allows you to do is you can tell us instead of the, the product feeds from the previous one, it's basically a feed of every single product. And so you just tell Google, here are all of my products, here's all my data, just process it all again. What you can do instead is actually there is an API to update the product information and you can tell it the product data. And so you can say, 
I want to update just this particular thing. And so if you've got updates occurring frequently during the day and you want Google to be always up to date, um, there are some delays, and I think I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but shopping tab in particular, uh, you can get the data there much more rapidly and make sure it's up to date much more rapidly. And so as you update your product data, you can feed those updates straight off to Google Merchant Center immediately. Um, you can update specific uh, products. You've still got all the other capabilities as before. So when would you use it? Well, it can be more efficient because instead of having to process every single one of your products, and if you've got a large inventory that can be significant, it will just update the products that you update. And so you could hook that into your product update capability of the platform to say whenever I update a product, push it immediately out to Google Merchant Center. But it does mean that you would be responsible to work out the differences. So um, you've only got to tell us differences, but you've got to know when, when the difference is. And as I said, if it was hooked into your uh, save button of your um, admin panel, then whenever you save a change to a product, you can hook in a, a thing to tell Google about it. But if the update failed for some reason, or maybe you need to queue them, uh, if you're doing a bulk update, you've got some challenges in doing it. So it's not saying that everybody should do this, but if you want to get the data updated uh, more rapidly with lower latency, the results of the API calls uh, are typically live in minutes, particularly for the shopping tab, rather than whenever the next feed processing crawl is performed. Now, uh, this is getting the data into Google Merchant Center. It doesn't mean that the organic search results are updated uh, instantly. There is a delay that uh, organic search just uses the various data sources periodically to refresh its indexes. So uh, it, it won't necessarily update in organic search immediately, but the more search, uh, the more e-commerce surfaces on Google will get that data more rapidly. So uh, I'm just uh, coming into the end stage now just to wrap up on a couple of points. So your first choice, and if you were starting from scratch or doing it yourself, you've got to pick which of the three strategies to get the data into um, Google Merchant Center. Now, if you're looking at extensions, uh, I'm not going to recommend particular extensions, sorry, for Google, uh, for Magento. There is a number of them, but you might have a look at to see which of the three strategies it's using just to make sure you understand the ramifications. So strategy number one was to basically rely on web crawl. Now, if you're not going to use an extension, this can be a particularly easy way to get up and going if you've got structured data on your pages already. You just go into Google Merchant Center, you give it the URL to your site, and you say, please um, harvest the data. And so if you just want to get going, that can be a useful technique without using an extension if you've got the structured data on your pages. If you don't have the structured data, um, it can be uh, not work so well because if it's, it's not reliable data, we will only start listing data as if we can really trust it to be correct. The second approach, and I'd say this is the most common approach, is to have a schedule with feeds. And you may, for example, upload your full product category uh, catalog like uh, once a week or once a day. And then you update your availability and pricing data maybe more frequently. Um, you might do that once a day down up to once an hour. And you just use these feeds to provide it. But you have to provide all of the data every single time. The third strategy is a content uh, API. And if you've got a particularly large corpus with only updating smaller parts of it, you can get your updates live in minutes. And so you can keep Google more up to date, for example, in the shopping tab in particular. And you get a lot more um, responsive and a lower latency update. But it, for a lot of people, they may not need that. And so it's really up to you to choose between them. And I'd say the feeds is the most common approach. Um, but the content API can be useful if you want Google to be, get your updates more rapidly. So I can't really talk about Google if I don't talk about SEO implications. And really, this has nothing to do with SEO. Uh, this is not about rank, uh, getting a better ranking score for your products in organic search. What this is about is getting a product data into search it's about getting more accurate product data to make sure Google really understands your products. And that can get you into those, if you go back to the first slides, remember the different search experiences. We will only include web pages and products 
if we know that it's relevant for those experiences. And so it helps us to understand your products. It helps you to uh, helps us to surface your products in different experiences. Um, and it's also about getting um, the, the speed of the content updates into Google search so that we have fresh data. That's the issues for Google Merchant Center. You've got to remember a crawl may only run, um, the actual rules vary on the popularity of a site. There's a, there's a number of issues about how often crawls occur. So Google Merchant Center allows you to update that information more rapidly. For example, you've got a sale on today, great, update all the prices, and Google will understand those prices uh, more rapidly, it's particularly important for the shopping tab. So it's not an SEO, um, it's not gonna boost your ranking signal. It's more about the experiences you can get into. Now, Google Merchant Center is also important, like it's mandatory for getting you into the Google Shopping tab. And one of the big things to realize is that Google Merchant Center with the Shopping tab, it, Google Merchant Center is the only way to get into the Shopping tab. So you have to be in Google Merchant Center if you want to get into the Shopping tab. And it's free now, but that was a change that was made this year. So that previously you might not have worried about Google Merchant Center so much, you know, do I really need to get into another experience? Well, you're now missing out on additional search traffic for people who use the Google Shopping tab. They won't find your products unless you use Google Merchant Center to tell us that yes, you're signing up, and yes, you want your products included. Um, you have to give us permission to do that. The other um, aspect is the data is, as I mentioned, like the special experiences, they're organic search experiences. So that was also new this year that we use the um, Google Merchant Center in addition to whatever structured data is on your site and so forth and the Google crawl results to enrich Google's understanding of your product. So we merge this data together to make sure that we understand your products and your pages the best we're able to and to deliver better experiences. And there's a number of different experiences coming up. I showed you a couple. There's more coming along all the time. Um, you can watch the blog for more information. Um, for example, there's a better apparel experience. It'll tend to display visual results more than textual results when people are searching for clothing because they like seeing the clothes more than reading about the clothes. And so based on the type of the product, different experiences can come up and Google is just continually trying and experimenting, trying to work out how to best help people find your products. Because at the end of the day, that's what Google's about. Google's about helping shoppers find your products on your site, that is where um, Google fits into the whole e-commerce e um, story. So just to the, the recommendations, it is worth adding structured data on your web pages. Uh, it can make them more reliable to pass. Uh, for a Magento site, that's a matter of finding an extension to do it, or you can um, find your trusty um, agency to help you do that. But uh, it just helps Google understand your pages. You then have to understand uh, or decide on your strategy, which may be a matter of picking the right uh, extension for your site on how to get the data in. Are you gonna rely on website crawls? Very easy to get up and going. Uh, Google Sheets, it's pretty easy. Another way of getting up and going if you can't modify your website, um, but only suitable for smaller volumes of data. Otherwise, we're gonna be looking at fetches uh, or uploading feeds. And the content API was the other one I don't have listed, listed there. You do still need to worry about SEO if you want to get ranked well in searches, but that's more to do with the content, picking the right keywords, picking good descriptions. And is there some magic? Well, some people always ask, oh, how do I, how do I always hit the top in ranking? There is no good answer for that one um, because everybody wants to do it and we will only tell everybody the same answer. And so it's really just a matter of using the best content you've got available so that Google is best able to understand that content and so uh, ex bring it up through these different experiences. Um, pick words that accurately describe it. If, we, if Google detects that we think you're doing bad things, um, I think quality is one of the ranking scores, but at the end of the day, uh, I can use my, I can't talk about the Google approaches very much, but I can go back to my eBay days. We used what users looked at. And there was a feedback mechanism. So the ultimately, if you're provide, providing good information that is valuable to users, um, eBay promotes it because eBay wants to get conversion and wants to get sales. And it's the same thing for Google. And so the ultimate thing is 
your goal should be trying to satisfy user needs because that's what Google is trying to do. And so the more data you can give to Google to help us um, satisfy user needs, that's ultimately what leads to success. And it might be slightly unsatisfying, like I want a particular magic sequence. There isn't one, it's continually evolving. And so I actually recommend people focus on having good quality data, uh, unique data, satisfying needs of people uh, that may not be satisfied by your competitors. That is where I'd be focusing. Um, rather than trying to do some particular clever strategy. But that's the uh, end of the presentation. Um, Thank you so much, Alan, for the wonderful session and for the insight like you have shared on the uh, Google Merchant Center. Thank you for having me, it's been great.